Hello everyone, we are Isrus and this is the first in a series of, of vlogs. Is that is the, way, is the right oh, way to yeah, say it? Yeah, video right. blog. Uh, we decided, <coughs> decided to start being in touch with, with, with our fan base. And because we want, we actually want people to, to, to get to know us because we think it's interesting to have a, a, a closer relationship with, with the people that likes our music. And uh, we're not really sure about this actually because this is the first time we do it and we have some ideas and we, we're gonna start and try to develop them with your help, hopefully. So first of all, if there's anything you want to know about us, uh, about the way we make music, why we make music and, and whatever you want to talk to us about or whatever you want us to talk to you about, just give us any suggestion. Uh, for tonight, what we thought is, uh, we think uh, we're gonna start going through the, the a brief history of the band and tell you who we are, where we come from, and how we got together. Uh, of course, my name, I am Brown, I'm the vocalist, and these are Tom and Lizard. Tom is the drummer and Lizard is the, <laughs> is the guitarist. Uh, the bassist is is is, uh, is in Rome, Italy, because this band is basically half Italian and half English, even though it has started in England. It has started in Cambridge, and uh, with Tom and Dave, of course. And they've been together for they've been friends for forever since they were kids. And friends, <laughs> loosely. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <coughs> loosely correct. They started a band when they were kids. You were? Uh, we were. Well, the first proper band was Spectre, I suppose. How old were you? Uh, when did we meet? We were, I think I was 15? I think I was 15. Right, you probably. Yeah. I think it was 14 a year. 14 or 15, so I would have been 16. So, um, about the, the year 2000, I think it was. Something like that. 99? Uh, we don't, we don't actually know. No, it would have been 98 because that's when I started A levels. Mm. So yeah, I was 16. And, yeah. So we were in um, we were in Cambridge and um, actually Dave, I think you were in the year year above me in school. And uh, so we'd been playing uh, music with various different people in the general community, student community I suppose you could call it, and um, various different bands and then we basically met through, <coughs> through my, brother. my brother, yeah, who was the same age as Dave, um, and uh, we, uh, and then basically we figured out that we have very similar taste in music and also general mindset in terms of what we what we thought was good and what we planned to do. I think one of the main, one of the first things was Pantera. We really, <laughs> yeah, we had a shared love of... Um, thrash metal, full stop. Yeah, vulgar display of power was a solidifying force in the early days. So we went through a long phase of uh, thrash metal, um, kind of uh, um, f fanaticism, right? I mean, Slayer, Metallica, Sure, uh, machine head. Yeah, loads, loads. The whole thrash metal thing that was going on at that time. Yeah. yeah. And um, and we played a lot. We played a lot of thrash. We we were kind of a thrash band at the time, Spectre really. Although we always had elements always that were a bit, bit different. Psychedelic. Well, yeah. Always. More ar artistic, like um, Slayer meets Radiohead. Um. So yeah, we always had those elements, that kind of variation that we had. In Cambridge, I don't know how long we were there for, but I don't know what, four years, five years, kind of studying and um, playing music a lot. We used to play about eight hours a day in my house, and then we went through various oh, different... Yeah, a few different yeah. studios, quite a few. Um, and then we moved down to London. Um, I don't know what year that was. Any idea? 2004. Sounds right. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we, we decided we were going to um, pursue our music careers 
and we moved down to London and both went to music college. We lived in Brent, Brentford. <laughs> And um, and I went to drum tech, music college, and actor, and you went to guitar, guitar institute. Yeah. Uh, and we just played that <coughs> a lot. I think one of the main things that that we've done since the beginning is just playing a, ho a huge amount. So we've always well, yeah, maintained like a really regular. A lot of improvising together, I suppose. That's like me and Tom have jammed together for thousands and thousands of hours, mm, mm. and it's kind of. I don't know, it's like when we jam together now, it's kind of, you're almost telepathic in a way, or it's just easy to, mm. um, I don't know, kind of move together in a way, mm. when it's unplanned, which is good. It's like a, a very gradual understanding that we've built up over hours, countless hours. I mean, I don't know, we've, we've never really had long breaks. I think we had one long break that was... Well, the one we had was when we, after Telos, when mm. we moved out. Studio. But even then we were sort we were kind of sorting things out that but we didn't have a really strict practice regime. But generally we've always played a really long time anyway. I don't know what like in the in the early days we used to play eight hours a day together, pretty much every day. Um, and then we and then we played a hell of a lot when we were in London because we were in music college and we had the only benefit by the way, if anyone's interested, uh, in uh, music college from my perspective as a creative artist instead of a session musician, is that you get a lot of time to play. Um, so you get a lot of time in the practice rooms and that, that was mm -hmm. the main benefit, right? And also, I suppose technique was another one. So it was just the two of you in there? No, uh, good point. So we actually went through, <laughs> we're kind of perfectionists. And yeah, we're, I know. we're all perfectionists. I know something about that. So yeah, I mean, it took us like 10 years to find, to find you. Um, and that was a really hard, really, really hard uh, phase. You know, we went through a, a lot of um, difficult times of, of having to reassure ourselves that we would find the right people. We went through seven well, that was one of our main phase. reasons of going to music college was to try and find people. But we just found a load of uh, session player wannabes. Just dickheads. I think. Dickheads. Hundreds just, of dickheads. Yeah, hundreds of dickheads. Wannabe rock stars. Mm learning songs by rote, you know, sight reading and, and, and kind of just playing it's things that have already been done. Totally. Because before that I was studying art at an art college and the difference was huge because art's just, art college is all about creativity and freedom and doing your own thing and music college just wasn't. It was mm. just learning to be a machine basically, which is not what, what music's about. What I've been thinking about like, lately is actually we are fully, we are actually at the end of, of the process of, of creating a new album and uh, I've been thinking as of lately that it, it, we have chosen or at least this genre that we make has chosen us but it is probably one of the most uh, complex way to express yourself in, in rock music in, in so many ways and it's just not so spread even just the mentality that, that comes with it I'm talking about progressive metal of course and progressive in general because most people that make music they, 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 they just don't they, this is different this is so much about at least for us and for a lot of bands actually that, 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 that are like us this is so much about you know, philosophy and the way that you think and, and look at the world and the view that, that you have of reality and, and your life and, and the way to make music that, that has to be... Well, I think the difference is, you know, it's not a case of writing songs about something. What, what we're sort of trying to do is convey a feeling or emotion as opposed to a specific you know, Concept. event or something that's happening. You know, it's, mm. it's more of a, a state of mind. And that's why it's so hard to find other band members. Yeah, that's, because that's what I, what I want to say. <laughs> so that's, that's the point that I wanted to get to. Yeah. And I just it, lost it, it took us a really long time. I mean, it took us a really long time. So anyway, let's carry on with the history. So then we came to London. We were in Brentford for a number of years. You then moved to Stockwell. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved to Chadwell Heath, East London, and we had a studio in Bermondsey, 
Well, no, before that we had a studio in Wilson Green. Oh yeah. For a while, and then yeah, then no, then London Bridge. Mm. All of this time, it was basically me and Dave. It, no, yeah, it was just. It was, it was. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, no, we had other members, right, that came in when, you know, we had a well, few. Yeah, members. once we got to Bermsey, that's when we found, we started playing with a few a few different people. <coughs> Bassists, had a few mm -hmm. local people mm -hmm. try out. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the core, in terms of commitment and, and identity of the band. Paid for the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, yeah, financial <laughs> commitment, and, which has been quite... Important in in this band, yeah. So yeah, and then uh, we found. I think you found. Uh, well, we were putting these messages out on YouTube trying to find singers, and every in every way you can possibly imagine, we were. I remember it was, it was such a dilemma. It was yeah. I mean everything you could possibly imagine, and we got quite a lot of responses. Yeah, we got well a over a hundred applicants. I think mm. contacted us. We're talking about about ten years after mm. all this started, right? Yeah, yeah. we'd we'd work with maybe for any extended amount of time. I think we had two vocalists for a long amount of time each, mm. and two or three bassists, I suppose. Yep. So okay, so in the meanwhile, I was in Rome in Italy. And uh, I started making music when I, when I was a kid, uh, I was 15, 16. I was starting to realize that I was a singer because I, I found myself uh, spending a lot of time alone at home just singing. But what really happened was pretty weird because a friend of mine at school, just he was in a band, he was a guitarist and he, all of a sudden just out of the blue, he asked me if I wanted to, to be a sing the singer for his band. He didn't even know I was into singing at all, so it was just, you know, we firm, firmly believe in, in synchronicity in this band, and actually our story has proven us that sometimes things, things just get together in, a, in, an, in an unpredictable and, and very hard to, to, to understand way. Seems like things are meant to be and that's pretty much what happened to me because I, I, I've been in a band for forever I've had my, my own band with, with this friend of mine and other guys and one of, one of them was the, the, our, actual, our, our uh, current bassist Daniele Gravina which is in Rome now and that's why um, I said that we are half Italian and half English so at some point after I think seven or eight years my, my band uh, split up and I've been not making music for, for some years and since you know uh, the musicians out there are definitely going, going to understand what, what I'm saying when I say that if you are a musician you are a musician and there's no way you can get out, you can get out of it. At least you can <coughs> stop being what you are supposed to be but it's very very painful. So it has been painful not making music for, for years. And at some point I just I have had kind of a breakdown and I quit uh, with everything I was doing. I just decided to, to move to London because I, what I thought was uh, what I want to do is progressive, progressive music, progressive rock and metal music and, and, and I feel like I felt that what I had to, to, to express in some way, I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I could never find anyone to, to share this thing with the, the way that I wanted to in Rome. Especially because the, 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 the you know, music is not very, it's not doing great in my country. It is, it's not paid a lot of attention to. So I decided to move to London, but, but to, to find a band, but a month before that, a month before I, I, I moved, I, I was checking a, an, an Opeth video on YouTube. It was a live version of Bleak, I think. And uh, I saw this, this, this comment that was from Tom mm -hmm. in the name of the band. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was using YouTube comments <laughs> to, find, to find a singer. That, that's where he got to. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> it was just uh, it was just saying we are as we we do this. We we need a singer. Just get in touch with us. And that's what I did. Uh, I told him I'm coming to London. Just wait for me because I checked this. this I checked their stuff and I loved it. Yeah, you did say that right I away since the beginning. I thought it was no. Great. You said I think what you said was I'm your singer. Uh, so no, okay. I'm this is London. okay. This is the way. It was just arrogance. Yeah, I was very, very <laughs> arrogant in it. It was just for fun, actually. But the, the message was, uh, he said that they were looking for someone who, who would be influenced by Maynard and Patton. And uh, I don't remember, I think he said, you didn't say Eddie Vedder, right? I'm not sure. No, you right are, I, I can definitely remember Maynard and, and Patton. Patton, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I told, and I told him, I'm the guy, I can do this. And I, and I also said, but can you actually play like this guy's bands? Yeah, and, he he said, did, he did. and he said, yes, we can. And, and he showed me their stuff. And I thought, uh, I fell in love with Isarus right away. Mm. Especially because I saw the potential. Uh, I saw these guys and uh, I, I knew that, that if we got together, we could have express uh, we could help each other, one another, to, to express ourselves mm -hmm. way better. I just felt that it was my band. Mm -hmm. So I moved to London and I came here, they, they had this studio in Bermondsey. Um, after a couple of weeks after I, I found a place to live, uh, I went there to, to show them my, <coughs> my first version of, of Dark Matter from our first album, Telos. And the rest. Yeah, I remember that day um, really clearly. I remember clearly when we were at the tube station. Well, the, the funny <coughs> thing about all this is we literally lost our bassist that we've been working with for a, probably over a year. Mm, he was good as well. And he, it was he he kind of decided to leave due to he could, just felt he couldn't commit as much as we sort of wanted or needed him to do. Mm -hmm. And he left the band basically probably about a month before. I think it was out. less. I think it was yeah, a couple, couple of weeks, less than something like that. Month, yeah, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty much the same time. So yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Got a very good basis. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, and I mean, like he was he was struggling with the fact that we didn't have a vocalist and that we were being perfectionists about getting the right vocalist. I mean, just if you're going to do something, do it right. Basically, is always our approach. So otherwise, just just forget it. Um, so um, so basically, I remember when when you first did the first version of Dark Matter. We've got a really old video of that that I recorded on my phone in secret through the <laughs> through the control room video. Yeah, you can see my the back. Control window. You can see this, this yeah. thing in back. It was like the really? first, that was the first uh, day that you were present within this room. <laughs> And we knew straight away, I knew yeah, yeah. Like straight it was, away. It was a really impressive audition because anyone else we'd auditioned, we played live with them, like we'd given them a track and they prepared something and then we played live with them and Brown just came in and he said, no, I want to record it. Mm -hmm. um, so he went into the, the main room of the studio with the mic set up and me and Tom were in a separate room in the control room. Mm. Um, and so we just spoke to him through the talk back on the on the desk, and uh, and he just sang the whole song basically. Yeah, it was re it was a brilliant moment of my life. I remember because <laughs> ten years or more than ten years of searching, it was really painful at times, maintaining and often it's the it's the case with projects like this that that it is tough at times to to maintain. Uh, Especially because we are. Grown men, you know, we're not kids. <laughs> so, well, there's a lot of things going on, and it's yes, not easy. Yeah, exactly. It's not easy right, at all. Right. Um, so, so yeah, that moment it was kind of like that phase of the the struggle had ended, and and that was when we really got to the point where, you know, it was like okay, now we can actually move forward and do what we what we wanted to do, and and yet at the time, and this is really going to tell us now, at the time we'd written this material over sort of ten years or so, um, maybe slightly less than ten years, but. Uh, a long time. So we had all of this stuff and we were in the process of recording it um, as an album and then Brown came in, wasn't really involved in the writing process of any, anything other than the vocals specifically and then 
I just had this, basically. <laughs> this is what I had. Uh, this is this is the I think the first demo. Yeah, that's that that's basically the, a demo we did with the bassist we had at the yeah. time, purely to find a vocalist. With four we, tracks that yeah. are, can you see? It? With four tracks that are dark matter and uh, everything is nothing this year and the accompaniment of shadows that you have heard if you if you ever heard tell us. So and, yeah, and if you haven't, ones. it's a free download from our website, isrusband.com. <laughs> um, free download. Free, yeah. yeah, free. Yeah. We've also remastered it. So. Yeah, we put a ridiculous amount of work into that <laughs> yeah. at the time. But, you know, really, to be completely honest about Telos, the way that, that it is, in my opinion, is that it was something that we had to, had to kind of get out, in a way. It, it's weird, it's like... It, it, get, well, I think it's... We needed to, to bond. We needed to, to do something together and, and start, I think. Well, I think part of that, yeah, it was obviously working as a, as a band with, mm. you know, with a vocalist for mm. the first time in ages. But also, um, I feel that it's, kind of, it's shaping the, the actual sound of the band in a way, because the stuff we're, we've done now has elements of certain tracks on Telos, but some of the elements that are on Telos are completely gone, I think. Um, it was kind of a... It's us sort of finding our, our way, finding our... finding our sound, I suppose. Yeah. Which Agreed. I believe we totally have now. Yes, uh, <laughs> definitely, absolutely. No, you're right, you're right. And also, I mean, Telos was, even in the title, it's kind of like an uh, accumulation, right? culmination of um, of the stuff that we'd been through up to that point and often the stuff that we'd been through was a, was quite a struggle I certainly think with this next album so now we can go on to talking about the next album um, but we can't say the name of it um, we have said it actually have we? yeah no one understood when we played live oh when, when yeah. we played live oh okay yeah. Well, fact, we went one live, one person, not pub, not, one person that's I mean, in which we played <laughs> the new tracks. One person that I spoke to thought, the only thing that they thought that he said was Montego cheese. <laughs> Fair so enough. It's, it's not. So we're not going to go any more into it right, <laughs> right now, but, but basically... Yeah, sometimes my English get, can be pretty weird and I suppose not very easy. <laughs> easy to understand. So we um, are now, well we have been working on the next album. For well, we, we didn't get to the point in which we we, oh, really? a, we are skipping the, the bassist struggle. Okay, um, so the bassist struggle. <laughs> yeah, the bassist struggle. <laughs> we continued. made another load of CDs. Yeah. That was for the bassist struggle. Oh, oh right, yeah. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just the bassist struggle compared to the vocalist one was, was nothing in comparison. But anyway, I mean, this is the, the Tales version that we used to go around, oh, go yeah. about London, Camden, and spreading it. Yeah, to Camden, spreading it. I mean, it is not easy to find a, a progressive metal bassist in London. Mm -hmm. We can it's assure you that it is not easy at all. It's surprisingly difficult. It's surprisingly difficult. Yeah, especially someone that, that gets it, and understands what you're what you're trying to do. And yeah. I think that you know, with uh, Daniele, it's kind of it, it was uh, we knew that. When he started writing stuff and playing stuff, it was the right. It was the right. It's the right mood. feeling and mood and yeah, complimentary and and also he's our kind of person. I think that that's it's weird talking about him when he's not here though, isn't it? Yeah, Daniele, it, he was my. He's been my friend for for a very long time, pretty much like Tom and Dave. Dave's Lisa, by the way, and uh, <laughs> basically I went back to Rome for for. A, year and a half because we were working on the on the new album but I have business to take, to take care of in my city so we've been working from a distance basically and you know going back to the synchronicity thing after years we haven't met for years uh, I just met him uh, right when we were starting to, 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 to look for a new bassist again and we met again and I told him look we are doing this and, and we are record we are producing this album and I really I love you to be in it because I know that you are the right basis for us. And 
he hadn't be he hadn't been making music forever, basically for for years and years, and and I think he was just waiting for it. So we started working together to the tracks. I I started started going to him and and showing him our stuff because basically the album was pretty much our parts of the album were pretty much done by that mo at that moment. Mm -hmm. So I managed to we managed to have him come into London for two times actually uh, for a period of two weeks okay, overall. Two weeks and then yeah. another week. No, I think came for two weeks and then yeah. another week. Yeah, so, so it was quite impressive, really. I mean, in the same way that in a, in, in a way, this album for for Daniele is kind of like Tell Us What's for You. Yeah. You know, very similar because mm -hmm. he came over and recorded it in a really short period of time. He works. 10 hours a day or something of recording bass, it was yeah. ridiculous. Three weeks. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous, it was amazing. Um, and sorted us out completely um, because we were in you know, a similarly difficult situation, it would have delayed us and... Yeah, I mean, it just came together. It's really weird that you knew him from before and I think maybe that's got something to do to do with it, you know, in terms of he, he got it, he got it right away and also you probably got on with him so well because you're similarly minded, you yeah. know, in the same way as us being friends. Uh, and now we're kind of discovering that we're all similarly minded really, but also kind of different in certain ways. So anyway, um, <clears throat> now we can talk about the next album. Yeah. I'm just going to give you a quick example of uh, some of the, the way that we work in terms of logging our ideas and, and the work that we do. So I'm just going to show you some of this stuff. Just making sure there's nothing there that we don't want to show. <laughs> uh, so these are basically just CDs of jams that we do, and gradually all of this stuff, you can see this is up to 50, this is just one example, so we've got lots of these, uh, these CD kind of booklets that we, that we have, that was what we used to do, in fact before well, we that, still... yeah. <laughs> before that we used mini discs, so this was the first thing that we used, um, so we went through a lot of different mini discs, I mean loads. Well, I'm still doing this as a backup. Thing. Um, I'm still. I mean, all these are stored as MP3s on a computer. These are just like a hard backup. Mm -hmm. But we're now up to 107. 107. So, yeah, CDs. CD thing. So yeah, I mean, obviously we've got everything in 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 the system. But what what we do, you know, in our in our computers. But what we do is we gradually boil that stuff down. We re-listen to the jams that we have that can be anywhere from, you know, an hour to a few hours, and then we we listen to it. We find bits we like. In fact, this isn't all of the stuff. There's, you know, the vast majority of it is not actually not recorded, recorded at all. Yeah. So then we just record once we've got in a, in a jam <coughs> one part that just kind of stands out to us as being good. We'll record it and then we'll re-listen to it and work on it and gradually refine it and build it into a song. So, what's this red? Well, this was this was pre pre Spectre experiment. Yeah, I remember that. Expert yeah. experiment. Goes up to experiment five. Yeah, that was Cambridge. I haven't heard any of that lot for a long time. Is this the is this a, an actual version of the album then? Yeah. So here's a version of Tell Us. We never actually ended up getting it um, printed in CD format properly, and um, although we were in discussions with her, with somebody about having it done as a digi pack. Uh, so we probably will do it at some point. But anyway, so that's Telos, and now we can talk about the next album. So what's different? Um, I think that, that really, for me, this is the album... I mean, toward the end of, of working on Telos, I started to, you know, have uh, in my mind a vision of what the next album would be and then gradually piecing together the elements that we had to have in terms of our working um, life, the way that the way we work together, you know, moving to, to live together um, and getting everything right so that we could work on it in the way that, that I thought that we should and we, we thought that we should and so this album for us is really it's, it's a huge leap forward from Telos in a lot of different ways I mean for me personally the the drum beats and just the general drumming that I've done on this album is uh, it's taken a lot more time in terms of refinement. There's a lot of different.
things that I'm doing now that I didn't do before. My drumming's obviously progressed, just in terms of my technique and uh, what I can actually do on the kit uh, to better express myself. But also, I think that uh, that I've kind of, and it's true for all of us, we've kind of boiled down to the essence of what we wanted to say and what we wanted to express a lot better this time than we did last time. Well, I found with for me um, with Telos. It kind of made me realise the sort of tone and mood that I really wanted to be trying to trying to get out or try to, um, to express. And that's I think going into this album, I was a lot more sure of how I wanted it to sound and the kind of elements I wanted in it. I think for me, I kind of, from the start, it was more I had a more clear goal. Whereas Telos was a bit more random and just kind of happened by, not, not accident, but you know, it just kind of, it just happened, but without mm. much sort of forethought or, mm. um, or without a defined um, so, feeling or sound. I mean, the main thing for me, the way that I feel about it, is that we've really refined everything that's on the album a lot more, so we've distilled it. That's the way I view it. It's much more distilled. You know, uh, the ideas are kind of really, really kind of boiled down to the to the elements of what we want them to be. <clears throat> and then dynamically as well, certainly in the drumming that's the case, you know, it's as much a, a case of taking things out, you know, taking as much as I can possibly take out and having everything that's there be, you know, uh, there for a, for a reason. Um, and all serving the same kind of... Uh, purpose as the rest of the song, so, um, thank you, Brown. Well, this is a, for me, as for everyone else, this is a very, very different experience uh, from the first album, because, as they said, it, it sort of happened, tell us, it, it, especially for me, because when I got here, uh, the songs were already done, already done. And what I've done basically was just responding to to, to, to their to their work. Uh, I didn't even uh, didn't even change the the names of the songs. The, those are the, those are the names that they, that they gave to the songs. And basically, what I've done was uh, I used those names to to figure out a concept for the album. And it was just a matter of responding to, 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 to an input from them. Whereas this time, we are, uh, we are more of a unit, of course, because we've been friends for years now, and uh, we have decided, we have uh, planned everything about this album together. So the concept, the, the meaning of it, the, the, the themes that we are going to be treating, that we have treated, because it's yeah. done by now. Uh, especially for me, this is this is. I really, I've always felt like I've never actually expressed my my, my true potential with Telos, and it was done. It, it was pretty, pretty fast the way, the way that we produced it. it. I think it took like three months less than that. At least for me, it took one month to to write and record all all the all the vocals pretty much. Yeah, I think it was about three months. Hopefully. And that wasn't very good for me in some way, because I never really got to get into the songs, because we, we wanted to, 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 to get over with it in some way, as, as soon as possible, so I didn't give it the time to, to grow on me uh, in a proper way and to, to really get into the songs with my vocals and, and with my um, with my heart too, in yeah. some way. <laughs> and I think, <clears throat> for me, I think, you know, as I said, like what ties into that, the, the reason um, for that, I think, was that I I was already I was already thinking about the next album fully. I was already fully engaged in the process of the next album toward the end of Telos when you were recording vocals and when we were mixing. And so it was really just a matter of let's yeah. get this done and let's do what we, we were all projected towards the future, to, towards what we were going to do as a as a as a as a unified band in the future. And this is what happened mm. because mm -hmm. we are very happy with it. Uh, I think this this is gonna blow your minds because it blows my mind every time I listen to it. Mm. So um, I'm confident that it's gonna do the same to other people. Mm -hmm. And we we feel this time that this is this is us. This is Israel, yeah, yeah. especially because there there's Daniele too with us. 
and uh, for this great great uh, occur uh, occurrence, <laughs> for, this, watch, yeah. Yeah, for this great occurrence in our lives, we have decided to to have the album mixed by a guy that's kind of special for us because he's been mixing some of our favorite albums. And, and by the way, you could be wondering why we are why we have a copy of Tools Lateralus on the table. And that is because we decided to start, apart from, we want to, to promote ourselves, but we also want to, to promote the music that we love, because it all comes to it uh, in the end, it's all about the music for us, so really, we, we, it's really important for us to, to, to push <coughs> forward the, the kind of, of musical movement that, that changed, changed our lives, basically, that's yeah. defined our lives. I think, you know... <coughs> So by the way, sorry, I, just, I was just saying that we are going to have this, this album mixed by a very cool guy that has produced some of, some of our favorite albums, which is... Jens Bogren. Jens. Jens, well, <laughs> Jens. <laughs> you know, Swedish names are not, are not Jens. very good at it. Yeah, Jens, Jens Bogren. But the thing is that, you know, we're in discussions, we're waiting for them to come back to us to, to give us a timeline. Um, and we're also... Will also, you tell them who's Jens and... Okay. What albums is the Jens, Jens has worked on uh, lots of, lots of stuff. He did A Great Cold Distance by Catatonia, uh, Ghost Reveries by Opeth, Watershed by Opeth. Mm -hmm. He's recently done... Um, he He's worked new, with James Labrie, Pain uh, of Salvation. Recent, one of his most recent ones is the new Dragon Force album, mm -hmm. which I don't know if it's out yet, I don't even like Dragon Force. Just did Out the Gates. <laughs> Just did Out the Gates new album as well. So, yeah. so basically, we, me and Dave, uh, we've got a good. At some point in this video blog, we'll show you our kind of studio setup and what what we use to listen to music. Um, and you know, we have a, a acoustically treated uh, studio with high quality monitors, etc. So we have the ability to listen to things and hear them, you know, in great detail. Um, and so we went through a long period of time where we were just referencing loads of different mixes. Yeah, just trying to see who we liked really, who was working out there that was getting things sounding good. I mean there's quite a few other people we um we were interested in. Mm -hmm. Danny Bergstrand. Yep. He did Coloss by Mesh Over. Yep. And lots of other things. And I really like the work he did on soil work. Uh, for soil work he did some some he gets great drum sounds. Um, another guy is Andy Snape, who we're considering, and still kind of considering. Um, so, you know, it's not 100% certain, but one thing that is certain is that we won't be mixing and mastering this album ourselves. We're actually going to be paying, a, you know, someone to do that for us. And I think that that's a huge benefit, um, because they're basically artists, they're professionals. They, you know, we, we just can't get the sounds that that we were hearing, you know, we are always using reference mixes and doing everything we could to get the sounds <coughs> that, that we were hearing, but we just couldn't do it, we, just, it so we gave up. <laughs> it is a very stressful process. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's probably the, the, the worst part in oh, making yeah. an album. Yeah, definitely. Because you never feel like you are actually there. You never feel like you actually achieved the sound that you want yeah. your album to have. Mm. But if you give it to a professional that, that you trust, that, 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 a guy that you like the way he makes album sound, it's just... Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it takes a certain amount of burden off of us as well. And we think that the results are going to be a lot better than what we could achieve ourselves. So I'm really looking forward to hear it. Um, so we all, we haven't heard the finished product yet. <laughs> Um, yeah, we are looking forward to, to hear from them, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're looking, we're looking forward uh, to them replying to our emails um, that we sent them <laughs> the last week. Um, but they've been really busy working on Out the Gates, I know, and they're, you know, they're also figuring out the schedule. So we're just basically waiting for a time slot in terms of when we already have them, you know, commitment from them uh, to do it. Um, but it's just when. So... Um, so yeah, I think that's really it for the next album. I wanted to say. Well, we can't say too much about it because we're mm -hmm. trying to keep it all very secret. Yeah. <laughs> we're not releasing kind of. anything. Yeah. Um, so. But the artwork's all 
pretty much there. It's all yeah. getting ready. All the parts are uh, <coughs> very close to being 100% complete. We're just now working on layering of sound and thickening up everything and kind of working on dynamics of the tracks. So, um, so now we'll go back to something that you mentioned, um, which is what we're going to be doing uh, in terms of talking about our influences and um, you know, basically reviewing albums. Uh, what we intend to do is to, to do one album every video blog, and this video blog really we're aiming to do one a week, but it's probably going to be more like one every two weeks, but we'll see. We'll, we'll do as many as we can. We'll make it regular. Um, <clears throat> so today, we thought we'd start with a, ma a major influence for all of us. Probably, yeah, one of the biggest influences yeah. that we've had, at least for me. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot, but you know, this is a good place to start for all of us, and we've all got our, our own individual influences. But one for all of us was Lateralis by Tool. And I remember when this came out, um, I think the first few times of hearing it, you actually introduced me to this. Mm -hmm. um, and the first few times of hearing it, I think, I can't remember how old I was, but I don't know, 17? I think I was, yeah, 17 when it came out. 17, like 18. That. So we're talking about, well, it's. it's it was, I think 2001. It was 2000, yeah, 2000. 2001. Um, should probably know that for sure. Uh, so yeah, I remember the first few times I heard it, I didn't really get it. Um, I knew it was good and I, and I kind of enjoyed it, but I didn't really... Uh, I knew that I didn't really get it fully. And, um, and it's just become one of those albums that has just grown on me and, and become a part of my life, you know, in, in a deep way. And, and has influenced me, and, and Tool really are a band that have influenced us in terms of you know, the way they approach their art, and really it is art that they do. It, it's, it's kind of in a way, I think that we have a similar approach to the way that we write, um, and also the way that we think about things, and it's, all, it, it's really artistic, we're trying to create something. It's not, it's not um, doing it for, it's, it's about as far away from pop as you could get in a way. <coughs> so. Yeah, this album is a great example of, of one that, for me, was, you know, it was kind of, it was the first time I, I heard something that was really recent, um, that I liked and affected me as deeply as some of the, the old, the older 1970s prog rock stuff like King Crimson or um, all of that, that era. This was the first time that, that I... I uh, I, I don't know, I'd say there's another band from that sort of time that's in a similar category as Radiohead. Mm. Uh, you know, like truly exceptional, really artistic, groundbreaking bands. Yeah, yeah in many. terms of modern. Mm. Um, but going back to Lateralis, one of the things that, you know, as a drummer, obviously Danny Carey is a fantastic drummer, um, and you know, one of the things that, that I think was so amazing about the way that he drums, and spe especially on this album, is kind of like a, it's like he found a, a really great balance between uh, between having something structured, pre, pre-organised, um, pre-structured, and also improvisation. So I can tell that, you know, for instance, at the end uh, of The Grudge, which is the first track, um, there's a great drum build-up and a just a kind of drum solo type thing and it just blows my mind even to this day it's something that I can't fully appreciate uh, I understand that I can't fully fully grasp exactly what's going on but, but I think one thing I'd say about it that I notice is that it's like he has elements that he he has in his mind but there's also a freedom you know when he actually plays that ending it's almost like it was improvised at the time of recording it and there's something really natural and, and kind of dynamic about that. Uh, it's, it's a really great expression of what he was what, aiming to get across. I remember <laughs> both of us being a little bit drunk in the studio when we were listening to lots of different albums. And <laughs> we were listening to this, and at that point of that, you just turned to me and goes, wait, <laughs> but the best bit of drumming ever recorded by a human being. Um, mm. Yeah, it's true. It's mm. it's pretty epic. It's it is epic. Amazing. That that part, that that piece there, it's just 
for me, it's you know there are loads of of good bits of of drumming throughout loads of different bands and CDs and really great parts. But for me, that's a really truly uh, exceptional piece of drumming. And there's lots of it throughout the album. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's just very good art. <laughs> um, he's very good at what he does, and obviously <coughs> works very hard on it. And I just think that you know, it, it's that freedom that he has combined with the structure, combined with the technicality of it, um, that, that does something that, that's very rare. Okay, that's a rather smile. Uh, can I? Can I have it? No. Come on. Okay, this is a this is a very important album for me when I stumbled upon it. As I said, I think I was uh, 17, 18, I don't really remember what it's called. And I was pretty much into new metal, grunge music. I was, I've always been a big fan of Pearl Jam, and at that time I loved bands like Slipknot or, uh, and Korn. Stuff new like metal. that, new metal, yeah. And then, uh, and then this came into my life, and, and you know, even just the, the first time that I saw it, even just the art of it, I mean, everything was so striking, it struck me so in such a powerful way. Uh, I wasn't used to this kind of, of depth in, in music and, and, and art and, 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 and expression. And I've always been into, I've always wanted to, I've always been. I've always been writing music and, and lyrics in English, so I didn't have a problem with understanding the meaning of the songs. Well, literally at least, because it's not that easy to, to, to actually understand the meaning of the songs and the whole concept <coughs> of the album. And that was also the period in which I, I started getting to transcendentalism, transcendentalism, right? Transcendentalism. Transcendentalism and stuff like that. But I've always been a fan of, of, I mean, I've always been into philosophy and, and, and thought in general, so this was very, very different from anything that, I, that I've ever got in touch with. And uh, apart from, from the, the, the technical part of it, the, the, there are some things, some, there are some examples of, of creativity and depth in it. Like, for example, to me, it's the, the, the bass in Schism. I think for a lot of people, and of course, Miner's voice and and Dennis uh, drumming, everything got in touch with, with a very deep part of me and changed my life. I, I that's not a way to put it. It completely changed the the way that I approach music, and uh, I can actually say th this this may sound a bit cheesy, but. I can definitely say that this album, some, some of the songs in this album, especially Parabola, that saved my life in some way. Uh, and like cast a light on dark areas of, of myself. And there's so much, so much to, 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 to learn in some way, to, 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 to be specu speculating about spiritually and, and philosophically about this album. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a masterpiece. It's not just a great piece of music, it's also a great, uh, a great masterpiece of, 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 of conjunction of different, uh, different kinds of, of, of expression. Mm. And uh, yeah, There's, it's got a lot of soul, there's a lot of spirit in it. Yeah, something that, to be honest, I I, I feel that <coughs> Tool have lost in some way. With, well, I think this 10, is their thousand days. This is their peak. Opus, yeah. their opus. Yeah, their magnum so, opus. Their I mean, magnum. Yeah. Magnum. Opus. Magnum. I think magnum. <laughs> so I think uh, just want to say one more thing about it in terms of our appreciation of it and why maybe it's it's you know such a strong influence for us. It's because the way that we write and the way that we work, um, it seems like they work in, in a similar kind of way. Uh, you know, they talk a lot about accessing the shadow and, and going deep into yourself. And really, 
you know that's what we do in in our writing in our jams. We really go deep into into ourselves to to express what's what's there to, to dig it up and 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 just kind of be almost a conduit to whatever whatever we find there and and that requires a certain kind of openness emotionally and and psychologically that that uh you know they refer to and I can definitely um you know attest to personally in, in my own experience of writing so what about Adam James and his work on the album it's it's very good he to be honest he's not really much of an influence on me as a guitar player, I wouldn't say at all, in fact. I think Tool are a fantastic, incredible band, and they work brilliantly together, and they seem to move seamlessly as a unit, that's what's so solidified about them. Um, but for me personally, in terms of my guitar playing, I don't think I play anything like Adam Jones. Mm. And He's a weird one for me because he's a fantastic guitarist, he is really good, but he's not anywhere near my top list of guitarists, mm. even though Tool are one of my top bands. There's a lot of <laughs> similarities weird. between between your role in, in Eagles and Adam's role in Tool. You know what I mean? The fact that you are both guitarists and, and you also take care of the art artistic part of it. Because yeah, that's the same, but, but that, I mean... Because Dane <coughs> is, the, is the author of all the art or of our albums and, and so that's pretty much that the, they, they basically cover the same role in a way in I a mean way. <laughs> what is that? this is falling apart falling apart so I mean I think that specifically in relation to Adam Jones this kind of to me his background in a way you know but he just does what's necessary. You know, the interesting thing is that usually you have drummers that are kind of like the the, the kind of grounding force. Yeah. And he seems to be that in Tool a little bit. And mm -hmm. Danny carries a little bit more of the extravagant, you know, uh, performer, you know, an artist um, mm -hmm. in the band. And, and say he, he does have his moments, definitely. Is it falling down? Yeah, well. <laughs> If it falls, it falls. Yeah. Decay is part of life. <laughs> um, so that's the next That's Tool Lateralis. Yeah. Next time we were, we were kind of them. arguing about whether we should talk about this, mm -hmm. because, um, which I think is a good reason why we should do it first, really, because a lot mm. of people say we're a Tool ripoff, which <laughs> I think is bothered. Not a lot of people, some people. Yeah, some Two people, people ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, it comes up occasionally. People yeah, it say. comes up. But, yeah, I think I think we have a similar kind of ethos and mm. way of doing things to Tool. And obviously, we're in progressive metal, so yeah, we're the same sort of genre. But yeah, but you know, the interesting thing about all of that is that Tool are big King Crimson fans, and they said the same thing about King Crimson interviews. They said, oh, if anyone actually hears King Crimson, they're going to think, oh, they just ripped these guys off. Well, we were fans uh, of they King. They don't sound anything like King. They don't sound anything <laughs> like them, but but uh, I agree with that totally. Yeah. I, I thought. What are they saying? But I think that I can understand where they're coming from because we don't actually really sound like Tool either. It's so. just a matter of yeah, overall intent in some way of mm. of mood of atmosphere psychology I suppose, yeah, language we we have. It's like we speak the same language, but speaking the same language doesn't mean that you are saying the same things. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and we were fans of. Just for the record, we're King fans Crimson of King Crimson before Tool. Before tool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, not thanks. Be not before they discovered them, but meaning we were listening <laughs> yeah, to them. We were listening well, to maybe tool. we were, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I got my dad to thank for that, getting me into King Crimson early. I think that was a great, uh, mm. a great help. I've got my dad to thank as well for... Pink Floyd. I think, I think, to be honest, Pink Floyd are probably one of my biggest influences Same here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. And we sound absolutely nothing like Pink Floyd at all. That's it for Lateralis. Um, if you have any idea that you want to share with us, there's anything you want to ask us or something that you you don't agree with us with, you don't agree agree with us about, on, on, on. On. <laughs> please feel free to, to express it. And we are very eager to, to hear from you, from anybody who wants to, to start a conversation with us. Thanks for watching. Uh, first video blog, uh, there'll be more to come, 
in the following weeks. We're going to aim, as I said before, to do one a week, but might turn out to be less than that, depending on how things go. We've still got quite a lot of work to do. Uh, well, we've, we've still got a certain amount of work to do on the album. Just really quickly want to say for Andrew Edwards, uh, it was one question we got before this video, he wanted to know what kind of butter we like as a band. Um, important question, and thanks for raising it, and um, <clears throat> we like country life butter. Um, no, I don't eat butter, so it's just, um, I only eat we like, mozzarella. We like mozzarella. country life. I also like the pack, so um, bear that in mind, Andy. <clears throat> okay, so... And uh, in that vein, if anyone has any questions or comments, you know, obviously raise them, say whatever you whatever you want to say. We've said enough, um, uh, so you know, go right ahead and make comments and ask questions such as what kind of butter we do we like. Um, and that's it for this instalment of the Isra's video blog. Until next time. Bye bye. bye.